Hey guys, welcome back. So today PMDG released a new update for their 737 family and it looks like the tablet has finally been implemented into the aircraft which I know a lot of you guys have been looking forward to it. So I'll show you guys how to get it onto the aircraft and then we'll take a quick look and see how it works. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is you're going to open the PMDG Operations Center. Uh, this is the V2 version. So once you open it, you're going to go over here to the top where it says Aircraft and Liveries. And when you click on it, you're going to go to Product Updates. And then anything that you have installed on your uh, flight sims that are PMDG related, you'll see the aircrafts here. So for me, I have these three here at the bottom, which are for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Um, I've already done the update, but uh, it should show you here that you have an update, kind of like this bottom one here. If you don't see it, just cl uh, click on the check now. This will quickly search again to make sure everything is up to date. And then you should see it here in blue. So you're going to click on each one of these and let them do the update. Okay, so here we are at Buffalo International Airport, KBUF. And we're in the 737-800 variant. And after the update, you can see the new addition. We have a tablet on either side of the aircraft now, um, which is pretty cool. So that one I just started. The aircraft is in a takeoff state already. I've already uh, enabled everything and plugged in all the information required to do a small, short little flight from, um, from Buffalo to Toronto. So, I mean, the whole purpose of this video was to really take a look at this tablet. So here is the main first page. We have the home button, which brings you here. So we have two options, electronic flight bag and the performance tool. So if we go into the electronic flight bag, um, here you have a basic uh, Google map, which you can change to the Navigraph maps if you have a subscription. Um, and I'll show you how to get that after. Um, so here you are able to import uh, sim brief files. I don't have one to import now, so that's why it's blank. But I can type in here an airport, so if I type in the current airport that we're in um, and I go to search, this will give you your METAR data for the weather. And if you go to simple, this will just change it so it gives you a little bit more of a, just a visual representation of the METAR data, uh, which is easier to read. Second option below, you can't click on it, it's grayed out. Um, the third option is the Navigraph charts. Um, we'll get back to that one in a second. This option here, uh, this one will allow you to configure your settings. Uh, so you can uh, reset, you can choose any of the options you want for in, in terms of uh, heights or speeds. Uh, you can change all that here and you can change the brightness if it's too bright. Now just a note, these tablets do work independently. So you'll see that when I change one, it does not affect the other one. Um, and the last option here is uh, just the tablet information, which I'm sure PMDG will have other updates later on. So very quickly, if I go to the PMDG tab, I do have a subscription for Navigraph, which is already plugged in. So if you go in here and you type in an airport code, I just want to show you guys how it works. It'll start searching. Sorry guys, I was on the wrong page. Here you go. So Navigraph charts, and then here's all your stars, here's all your SIDS, um, here's your approach and your preferences there. So if I go down, so we're going to go to ILS 05, if I click on here, there we have the approach plate. So you can change this to day or night, you can zoom in or out, you can make it full screen if you wanted to. Um, you can pin this and you can toggle aircraft icon on or off. So right now you can't see it because it's outside of this area. So once you get closer, you should be able to see it. And I'll, we'll check back on this one later on. So if we go back to the home button, let's take a look at the performance tool. So here you have three tabs. You have the takeoff, the landing dispatch and the landing en route. So Again, here you can import from the OFP, which I don't have. So if I just in, insert the information here. Okay, so runway ID, we're on runway 05 in Buffalo, and this automatically populates the rest of the information. Um, now down here, 
you have the option from either the file or from the aircraft itself. I can pull information from the aircraft, which is going to bring in my weight and my CG. Um, takeoff flaps will do five. Uh, rating will leave it to optimum. Anti ice is off and the packs are off, and we can import the weather. This weather should match uh, this weather here. Five, three, okay. Okay, so once we click on calculate, there it's going to give us the information for uh, your flaps, your N1, uh, your trim, and then your VRFs are going to be right here. So the only thing I don't see on this tablet now that maybe it'll come in later is to export back to the aircraft. Um, this just kind of gives you a calculation. So if I go back here, to the FMC and I check out the init refs. Um, I did not do these on purpose, so we're going 1100. Uh, we'll do reserve one. Uh, we'll do cost index of 30. And we'll just put in the zero fuel weight. So we'll do the two climb. And flaps, we're going to do zero five. So there's your 5.2 trim, which should match here. Yes. And then the VRFs, we have 145, 146, and 154. Here's 146, 146, and 154. So to be more accurate, we can change it to the VRFs of the tablet. 146. Okay. And that last one was uh, 154 which is already there, so we're good. So those seem to line up, and if there's any differences in terms of condition, uh, in this case here, it is raining, so here we had wet, or sorry, dry, we need to change this to wet. And if there's snow, you wanna change it to whatever. This does impact the calculations. In this situation, it didn't, but in some cases it may. And that's pretty much it. So we'll do the landing dispatch and the landing en route as we get closer to our destination. Okay, so here we are at 11,000 feet. So we're, we've just about hit uh, cruising altitude. Um, so like I said, this is a short little flight. You can see here that it's not very long at all. Uh, let me just change this. Okay. So pretty much our uh, top of descent is coming up. And just so we can take a look at the plates. Let's go back over here. And just one point for you guys to see. So even with the implementation of the tablets, the movement is very, very fluid. So it looks like it barely took any hits on the frames, which is amazing. So let's go back over here. Let's take a look at our flight bag. Let's go back to the approach charts. So we have the one for zero five. So our localizer is 109.7 and 57. Uh, 57 is on the left, 57 is on the right, and our ILS is 109.7 on both sides. So I read to that prior. So this is good. So our uh, glide slope intersection is at 3000 feet. So we're just going to reduce our altitude here to 3000. 
There we go. We have our D cell here where it should start to uh, descent. I can see the engines are already starting to spool back. What a nice view outside of the cockpit, huh? Okay. So in the meantime, while we're just waiting for that, let's go back into the home page. We'll check out the performance tool. So landing dispatch. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what you'd want to use this page for. Um, but again, you can import from the OFP and you have import weather. So here, if I put down the airport code that we're going to, um, runway again is going to be 05. And here it obviously puts in the elevation, heading, slope degree, runway length, and runway condition, which I believe is going to be dry there. Um, let's just import the weather. And landing flaps will put at 40. And packs will have off, and anti ice will have off. Okay, and there's our descent. Now, if we click on the calculate here, so here it'll give you some information about, I guess, the runway. So you have the threshold here, which is 141 feet, and then you have the length, which is 10,981 feet. And on the right hand side here, you're going to have landing distance, the quick turn weight, VREF, uh, VREF with ice, weight, and weight with ice. So the, this information, uh, again, does not uh, export back to the aircraft. Um, and then we're going to look at the last page, which is the landing en route. And this one here is what's going to give you the information for how quickly you can stop on the runway. So if we do, again, the same preparation on this page. All right, runway ID, we're gonna put again 05, and again, it uh, populates everything else. I believe the runway is dry, we're gonna leave it as dry for now. Um, import from aircraft, the detail, which it just puts in the weight. Uh, landing flaps, we're going to change to 40. Uh, packs off, anti-ice off, uh, reverser config, we're gonna do all op. Um, this one will do speed break too. Okay, and then normal condition, non-normal condition will do zero, no added, import the weather, and then calculate. So here, uh, out of the 10,981 feet length of the runway, we're going to be using up 7,716 feet of that. That's where you have that yellow marker there. Um, and then you have a VRF of 148 for landing. So this is probably more important information because once we go back in here, to prepare for landing, uh, we're going to go auto brake 2. And has it already started? Yeah, it's already started. So we're going to turn on landing lights. And we're going to go to the init pref here. And we're going to go 40 degrees at 148. So again, if, if the VREF is different, you'd want to change it. But here it's calculating the same. So 148, we're going to leave. And then we're just going to uh, monitor it on the way down until we hit the approach. And uh, after that, uh, we'll go in for a landing.
All right, guys, so as we prepare to uh, touch down, I just wanted to say this is the end of the video. Um, I hope you guys found it informative. Once again, I think the tablet is on a good track. Um, it's clean. It looks good. Um, Performance-wise, it's doing great. Uh, no impact on frames. Um, the only suggestion I would have is to obviously uh, implement some of those missing features such as uh, payload, uh, uh, passenger uh, weight distribution and uh, luggage um, along with the uh, basic stuff like we have in other aircrafts maybe controlling of the doors opening and closing um, I know there's a, a bunch of stuff you can do with these uh, tablets nowadays but it would be nice to uh, see how this uh, comes along in the future so once again if you guys learned anything from it um, hopefully you did uh, don't forget to give uh, the video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Enjoy the landing.